I would like to invite up Reverend Sanja Mathis. And the newly ordained as of Monday, Reverend Shay Maltzby. So, and Reverend Brenda Errett. So, you might not all know this because we all live in different places, which is the cool thing about spiritual community today. But Reverend Shay Maltzby has been on our staff for, what are we thinking, like four years now? So I had a prayer when everything was very interesting. You know those interesting times that we all went through? And I needed some, someone and um, something to shift that I absolutely knew beyond a shadow of a doubt I could count on. Like that I knew their mind and I knew their consciousness and I knew their intelligence and I knew that I would have a partner and that I would absolutely um, be fulfilling my role to be positioned the best that I can be to help our spiritual community get through those times and not be one of the communities that closed their doors, which a lot did. And Shay Maltzby, I appreciate you for coming on board with us. Shay was a community member at Unity of Montclair when I was there. That was my first ministry out of ministerial school. And um, I knew her then, and I prayed about it, and I kept getting her, and I thought, well, she lives in New Jersey. I can't hire her. And then, you know, the world got weirder, and I was like, actually, I can. And she said yes, and she has continued to say yes to more and more. So thank you. We honor you. We bless you. I am so grateful you are here. And we're all so grateful you're here because we're all here um, in part because you're here. And Reverend Sanja Mathis came to us from an internship we were so grateful for long ago and um, has ever since been um, instrumental in the consciousness of this ministry. And um, you live in Alabama. I always have to sit there and go, Alabama, Tuscaloosa. And she hosted the Zoom room. So for a lot of you Zoomers, you know her very well. She hosted the Zoom room for a long time. And um, we're just so grateful that you are a part of our spiritual community. And Reverend Brenda Errett from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, um, who volunteered for years and years and years in this community. You know, well, yeah, technically, actually, with spiritual support to the minister and then with everything else, actually with everything else the whole time. And then finally came on staff for, uh, yeah, yeah. So this, this, group of individuals is just, I can't even put into words what we have here and the consciousness that we have and that we have built. Um, our movement is blessed to have the three of you. I am blessed to have the three of you. And our community is blessed to have all of us. And I acknowledge uh, Mark and Aisha in that mix. And I acknowledge Judy Estes in this mix. The one thing that I can say um, for this phase of ministry, because I've been here now for like 13 years or something crazy like that, crazy. <sighs> The one thing I can say for this phase of ministry, as far as your team that brings Unity Village Chapel to life, is that it is consciousness. I mean, yes, there are skill sets, and the skill sets are incredible, but it is hands down consciousness. Namaste. All right, well, hello again, hello. everyone. Hello. Yeah. Does everyone feel good? Yeah. Yeah. The air we breathe, right? So the spirit that is everywhere present within us, out with us, 
We've all been breathing into that. So I invite you on a journey with us. We're going to have a conscious conversation. We started having this conversation a few days ago, and so we're bringing it forward today. So most of you probably know Juneteenth was this past week, right? You can give it up for Juneteenth. It's all good. Yeah, let's give it up. And so we've been celebrating Juneteenth, I believe, for four years. It's been an official holiday. And some people still don't know what Juneteenth means. So we had the, uh, so you might remember from your history classes that Lincoln uh, freed individuals that were enslaved. Emancipation Proclamation. Thank you. Emancipation Pro Proclamation. <laughs> and that happened on January 1st, 1863. Well, it just happened that there were some people that didn't get to hear about it. Right? We had, I guess, horses back then. The mail took a long time. Talk about snail mail. And uh, in Texas, there were people who were enslaved that did not get to hear that they were free until June 19, 1865. Two years later. So what do you think about that? Is my mic on? Can you all hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah, I hear it now. Yeah. The idea, we talked in our conversation about that, that two-year period, and they didn't know their status and how that relates to us. How often are we walking around knowing, not knowing our status? Well, we're free, but you have to know you're free. And if you don't know you're free, then you act as one who's not. We also remember we also talked about uh, we people don't talk about this as often, but there were slaves after the uh, those of you who knew they were free, because it's a mindset, they were they went back to some of the slave owners and asked to be slaves again. So just think about the idea of walking into your Christ consciousness, and when you're not ready to, we said accept and then embody, then you can't be free. Even though that is your birthright, that is your, that is your Christ consciousness. So we're going to play, not play, but we're going to explore the idea of their two-year period because they didn't have access. The word is access, like Shay just said, they didn't have access to roads and that sort of thing. But I think the key word is access. What is, what is the access that we're blocking that keeps us from that same, that same place, that same understanding, that same freedom. So, okay. Yeah, and, and a lot of times we think that someone else right. is blocking mm -hmm. our progress, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But we know, mm -hmm. right? we know from the third principle in unity, yes. our thoughts right, and our feelings help to create our world. That's right. So, where can we allow ourselves to be free that we're not allowing mm -hmm. that for ourselves? Mm -hmm. Where do you feel in bondage? Mm -hmm. Just take a breath, breathe mm -hmm. into that. Where do you feel restrained? And how do you feel restrained? Mm -hmm. How do you feel in some area of your life that you may not truly be living into the fullness mm -hmm. because you don't feel free. Now, for some of us, that's in our families, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Job. Job. That's, that's a prevalent one. Yeah, I got to stay here to pay these bills. And we know in this teaching, you know, the source is greater and source is, is wider than this, this one idea of how to pay your bills. But if you, like you say, for whatever period, if you don't know who and whose you are, that becomes your God. And now you've, now you've slipped into idol worship, and you didn't mean to, but you've put something greater than, than, than who and whose you are. You know, you go in, well, now, we, I don't hope I'm not getting ahead, but we want to talk about the fourth unity principle, that you use prayer and meditation. Jesus, Jesus understood the power of going into the fourth dimension to change the third. And that's, where that, that's that portal, once again, the access 
uh, through prayer and meditation, the fourth unity principle, to, re to change those things. Now, of course, we know sometimes we're on our soul's journey, and there are some things that is a, that's part of our soul's growth. And even if, uh, I can't think of it, I think it was Dietrich Bonhoeffer that says uh, prayer doesn't change the circumstances. Sometimes it's about changing us, how we see it, how we view it. But think about how powerful that is. If you can change how you view it, there's a power and a freedom within that that can still shift. Every shift creates another shift. So, um, and then the fifth principle, I'll go there. We, it's not enough to know the truth. We have to live the truth we know. I remember when I was in my 20s, still in uh, Atlanta at Barbara King's Church at Hillside, and I sat with one of the elders. And so I was telling her all my problems because I was good at that, you know. And so she said, she looks at me and she crosses her arms. I said, what? She said, you know what the problem is? I said, what? She said, you know the truth. You just don't live it. I was like, who is this lady? I'm not leaving this place, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. The, you know, in talking about that fifth mm -hmm. principle, uh, I think in more modern times, we also see that as our call to service. Mm -hmm. So when you are accessing your own freedom, you're being in service to others. Yes. Right? Yes. First of all, you're demonstrating the principles by living into the principles, That's right? right? That's right. And you know, like I know, right? And mm -hmm. there's some people that says to you, oh, you are a little different than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think I want a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they start to model your behavior, your thinking, your consciousness. Also, we know we're all connected. We talk about oneness, yes. right? So when I break the chains that I may have placed on myself, or someone else might be trying to place on me. Yes. And then I have to say, get mm -hmm. thee behind, <laughs> yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Get that consciousness behind so that I can be free. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it creates a chain reaction, right. but a good chain reaction. This is the good news. Mm -hmm. And things start to shift for others as well. Because you're an example, and I think about the unity principle, thoughts held in mind produce after they, their own kind. And so when we make that shift in thinking, then you start seeing different manifestations. So making that shift, and that's why we come to places such as this, because it is, it's not always easy to hold that thought. And sometimes you need someone to stand with you. That's why uh, what Reverend Aaron was saying, Shay is solid. I can call Shay, and she's going to call you back, and she's going to say, you, like, you got off into some stinking thinking. Let me, <laughs> let me help you get back over here. And she will stay on the phone with you two years. Like, she said, okay, I think you're, you're back in balance. Call me when you need me again. You know? And we all need those friends, but sometimes we have to be our own friend. Because I was thinking about what you said, get behind. That's a part of release. One of the 12 powers needing to release things that perhaps you were born into, brought into, things people gave you, and you didn't understand, oh, I'm so sorry, this is yours. Take it back, <laughs> you, know, you know, and you held it, and then it created other shifts, but once you, once you realize that is not yours, give it back, give it back. <laughs> so... We both think that each person here probably has an area of their lives or some thoughts they've been carrying that no longer serve. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So where in your life are you seeking liberation? Mm -hmm. True liberation. That's really what Juneteenth is about. Mm -hmm. Liberation for all That's people. Right. All mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So Reverend Sanja told me a fantastic story yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it ties into this, so I'm going to invite you to share yes. that story. Okay, so we, 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 Shay and I decided we want to work from the, some of the 12 powers. So the ones we chose were love, wisdom and understanding, strength, faith, release, and imagination. Because you've got to work the imagination. It's, and it's more than just children. It's for everyone. Uh, wisdom and understanding go together. So I'm going to tell the story about my mother, and I felt like her story just embodies these six and so much more. Well, my, both of my parents grew up in middle Georgia, just poverty. I mean, it was just a poor, poor place. I remember going as a child to visit their homes where they grew up, and I remember thinking, you all should have gotten awards for living here. I mean, this is, <laughs> woo, how you do this? And so, and so uh, 
my mother decided that she wanted to go to college. My grandparents had nothing. I mean, these were farmers, and you got to think about the agricultural age was coming to an end as the industrial age was taking effect. So these people weren't. They grew up in it, but they, did, they didn't know how to go out in the world and create new things. So anyway, she decided she wanted to go to college, and that's what she told everybody. I'm going to college. I'm going to college. And so she got a job in a hair salon where the women would come out of the fields, and they want their hair done for the weekend. And so she would do their hair for 50 cents. And she would take a quarter and put it away and take another quarter and pay her bills. Now, I'm a business major from the University of Georgia. So when she told me this, I was like, Mama, those numbers don't work. You can't go to college <laughs> on those quarters, you know. And so she said, well, all I knew was I was going. But the thing is, so that's imagination. She saw something greater for herself than because everybody around was telling her what comes into this dies into this. Who are you? to want more. You, you better get yourself together. So anyway, she's working in a salon. And keep in mind, when you decide to live in your truth and step in your truth, something different comes forth from you. Your countenance changed. Your voice changed. People notice you. You have a glow from within. So even though she was in the salon with the other girls, she wasn't like the salon. She wasn't like the other girls in the salon. She was very different from them. So a lady comes in one day to get her hair done. She's working with another stylist, but she knows it's my mother across the room. She's just looking at her. And so when she's done getting her hair done, she walks over to my mother and she says, what is your name? And my mother tells her and she says, what is it that you're trying to do? And so my, my mother says, I'm going to college. And she told that woman that same story about those quarters. And I'm sure she was looking at her the way I was looking at her, you know? <laughs> and so she said, who are your parents? And so my mother tells her, she said, where do you, where do you live? And my mother tells her, so this lady makes her way to my grandparents' home, see that they don't have anything. She's like what she sees. She sends my mother to college. She sends her to college in Alabama. And my mother went on to get a master's degree and became a top second grade educator in Atlanta public schools. She didn't understand internships. Well, come on. <laughs> Let's give it up for that, right? Thank you. I, I took her to a church with me uh, when I was in, uh, in Georgia, and she heard me tell this story. And she was just like, that's me, y'all. That's me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, but think about all the, the 12 powers that she used. She had to release the ideas from the past of, I can't live here. Because she said, I always hated chickens. I knew I was going to get away from these chickens. Um, <laughs> she had the, the imagination to see herself in it. The faith, remember Hebrews 11, one says, faith is the, ev the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But Hebrews 11, 3 says, everything you see comes from something you can't see. She couldn't, physically, she couldn't see the college and everything, but she was, the Bible speaks a lot about the invisible being pulled into the visible. Mm -hmm. That's faith. Uh, strength. Strength is not about being strong. We talked about this yesterday. Strength is about the stillness. Remember Elijah in 1 Kings 19, he was sitting in that cave and the still small voice came to him in his fearful spot because he got still. Before then, what was he doing? Just running. Just running, just running from Jezebel and everybody else. But when you get still, that's your strength. And then wisdom and understanding. Proverbs 4, 7 says, and all you're getting, get understanding. Mm -hmm. That's the wisdom. And then love. She had a love for herself and the, lo and the life she wanted to create. It didn't take anything away from those people that, were, that couldn't see her vision because we spend way too much time, Deepak Chopra says, we spend 95% of our energy trying to convince somebody of something else. You are, this is your journey. That's mm -hmm. theirs. Mm -hmm. If they can't, if you can't speak at a time or two and they don't get it, what did Jesus say? Shake the dust. Keep moving. Shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. But yeah, we want to share that story because um, to me it embodies so many principles from these powers, these teachings, and it's a reminder of she knew where her liberation and her freedom was, and it was not to stay there in that spot. That would have been death for her, and she created a beautiful life that she's still living right now. Thank you. Yeah. So there's some old school language that says, God does not return to you void, mm -hmm. meaning, we all have access to the principles, all of the principles. 
We have access to truth. We have access to the law. We have access to our I am presence, each and every one of us. So hearing these stories, this discussion, I, we hope it inspires you that one thing that you might have been almost ready to give up on, mm -hmm. stay steadfast. Mm -hmm. Stay steadfast. That's part of your strength. Right. When Jesus did miracles, and we can just say that Reverend Sanja's mother That's right. Right, mm -hmm. lived into a miracle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Jesus, if you go back to the Gospels and you look at when he did miracles, many times he, carried, he had with him three of the disciples. Yeah. Peter, who's faith, John, His who's love, love right. and John's brother Andrew, who is wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. I'm not not Andrew, the other one. <laughs> wisdom is hold on. Oh, just, and understanding is Thomas. Wisdom and understanding yeah. with Thomas. Mm -hmm. And so you wanna you wanna remember these twelve powers. They're not out here. They're in here. Mm -hmm. And you can access them at any moment to help you move into the next level of your evolution, the next level of your liberation. Juneteenth isn't just something to celebrate on June 19th. Right. You can celebrate it each and every day mm -hmm. in your own lives. Yeah. And I want to jump in. Uh, I think about Eric Butterworth says that Sabbath is not just something you do on Sunday. Anytime you calm, you, you center yourself to stillness, that's your Sabbath. You can have Sabbath a couple of times a day or a couple of times a year. I would encourage it more frequent than that. But, uh, but anytime, anytime you go within, that is your, that is your Sabbath. Uh, I also wanted to uh, talk about briefly Galatians 5, the fruits of the Spirit. Because that's what we've been touching on these too. So the fruits of the Spirit are uh, love, joy, peace, steadfastness, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against these, there is no law. So that's, that's a starting place to build. And, and we, I think we had three of the 12 powers in the fruits of the Spirit. And so there was also in Philippians, it says, not that I seek the gift, but the fruit. Because you know, if I give you a car, a car, it'll, a car has a lifespan. But if I'm pulling from the fruits, love, joy, gentleness, I always have a, a, a Charles Fillmore said, that inflow that's always flowing in and flowing out. I stay in the flow. I'm always circulating. So whatever I need, I get a car. If I need another car, I get another car. Or it would be like, Oprah, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. <laughs> but whatever, and spirit would be like, you, you get faith, faithness, you get relationship, you get joy, you get health. If you, but but if, when you're focused on the, the, third, uh, the third dimension idea of it, you limit yourself. And that prayer and that meditation takes us back to the, the more full picture of all that's ours to have. That, that's your freedom. That's your, and that's how you can go to the doctor and get a diagnosis. And, and you heard what he or she said, but you know there's something greater. And you can, go, you can go into your boss's office and hear we're having a reduction in force. I understand, but there's something greater. And when you understand that circulation, not that these things won't bother you because you're still human. You're still human. People are still going to say things to you. And in your humanness, you might respond with that. I like to call it that, that verb and that pronoun. And it's not thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but when you come to yourself, because what you... <laughs> Uh, Deepak Chopra says, let's make a vow in his newest book, The Inner, uh, the inner Lama Dramas, I think what it's called. Um, make a vow to stop doing things that don't work. Because it don't work when you go off on tangents and start telling people off. All you do is create more wounding that you got to go apologize about. That's when you want to get still and go, take, like, like Reverend Aaron was telling the children, and it's, that was just not for the children. Take that deep <laughs> breath, Amen. and then go a little, we do that in yoga, then hold it at the top, and then release, so that you can look at them and not use that verb and that pronoun, and then just go, thank you, but please move away from me now. You know, but, so just keep that in mind. So I just want to share that Martha Smock in her book mm -hmm. 
halfway up the mountain said or wrote, freedom is yours, mm -hmm. but you must realize it and claim it. There is nothing that can limit or bind you, for in truth, in spirit, you are free, unfettered, unbound. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7, we're told that now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So wherever Amen. you are, Amen. what do we say? God is. He is. Mm -hmm. And wherever God is, you, you are free. Mm -hmm. And so it is. And so it is. Mm -hmm.